I think, like I said, I go back to everything we do as a story. It's like, if you, if you sell, you can sell anything. If you teach, you can teach anything. Um, if you're a storyteller, everything is a story. So for me, it wasn't about Skinner and Freud and, um, you know, any of the psychology. Uh, I did that because I was paid to do that. But for me, it was about, um, lifting others, helping others to feel like, um, to, to find out who they are and what they're here for and to, and to figure out everything that's inside of them and throw that out at the world and why they should do that to positively impact as many lives as they could. You know, for me, that's the story right there. That's why we're here. So how can I do that while we're talking about behavioral conditioning? Mm -hmm. That was, that was a challenge, but yes, there are stories that went in. From cave drawings to family histories to stories around the fire, humans crave order among chaos, connection amid isolation. So we tell stories. Our mission at the Storytellers Network is to bring the art of story to the masses. Whether you're in marketing, you're an entrepreneur, or you're developing your own personal brand, telling your story effectively can make the difference between celebrating milestones and collecting unemployment. The Storytellers Network strives to help storytellers tell their stories so you can learn from the best. Now, your host, the inbound evangelist himself, Dan Moyle. So welcome to the Storytellers Network podcast. I'm so glad that you're joining me today. In this episode, we uh, we hear from an interesting storyteller. Now, certainly all my interviews are interesting, at least to me. I've enjoyed every one of them. But one of my goals at the Storytellers Network is to bring you as the listener differing uh, points of view, maybe differing uh, levels, so to speak, of writers, someone who's just starting off versus someone who's well known, just to bring interesting stories to you. And today's guest certainly meets those goals. Tammy Ortlieb was introduced to me on Facebook. Now we have some mutual connections, including uh, where we're both from and where she lives now. So you'll hear a little bit more about that coming up. Uh, just very interesting. And today on the show, Tammy shares her storytelling craft, uh, how she writes this kind of thing, her successes, her stumbles, what she's up to now. In other words, she shares her story with us. Uh, and I'm really excited about it. Now, before we get into today's conversation, just a reminder to find us online at thestorytellersnetwork.com for more episodes, how to contact us, and for other resources to help you tell your story more effectively. Uh, and if you like what, we, what we're doing here, please consider leaving us a review. It helps us to reach new storytellers. And thank you to Podcast Pilot and Casterly for supporting this movement. If you want experts on the podcast world, like maybe how to start your very own show, Talk to the teams headed up by Jamie J and Sarah Parrish. They are fantastic humans. Now, let's get to the stories. Yeah, joining me today on the, on the show, Storytellers Network, is Tammy. And, uh, and I'm, I'm so excited to have you on, Tammy. I know you're out in LA now. Um, and that just to me, and I'm in like the Kalamazoo area, which to me says you can be a storyteller from anywhere in the world. <laughs> from anywhere. That's right. Yeah. So thanks for being here today. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. So, Tammy, uh, as I said, you're in L.A. right now. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Let the, let the listeners of the Storytellers Network know a little bit who, who you are. Well, let's start with where I am because I've actually lived in Michigan for the past 30 years and grew up in the Midwest. Um, I've lived all over, but um, spent most of my time in the Midwest. A um, few months ago, decided I was ready to follow a dream. I sold everything I had, packed up the Prius, and moved out to California. So I've been living in Orange County now for about a month and a half. Oh, fantastic. And how is it so far? Uh, sunny, warm, no <laughs> snow. Listen, we just had snow this morning and last night, so we're, we're done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I, uh, I actually, for a short time, uh, lived in the San Diego area about six months back, I don't know, 15 years ago or so. Um, love Southern California, so I love to visit as much as I can, so... Very cool. Yeah. So you've so so you're a writer. Um, you have a, a couple of books uh, on Amazon. I'm going to look here on the other screen to get the the titles right. Outside the lines: essays on poverty, possibilities, and the power of love. And then a fee, freeing your inner, freeing my inner blonde. It's your inner blonde. Um, so a couple of books out there on Amazon. Yeah, Tammy, you're a writer for the company that you work with that you helped co-found, Veg Out LA. Uh, you're a writer on your own blog as well. Have you have you always been a writer in some way? Uh, 
Uh, no, I actually used to teach at um, Kalamazoo Valley Community College Psychology. So I've been a professor, I've been an instructor, I've been a teacher, um, but I've always written uh, forever since I was a little girl. And I've always liked to sit people down and have them listen to me. <laughs> um, so, you know, from the time I was a little girl, I would sit people on the couch and, and perform for them and, and just take them away from what they were doing. And, and then I found that I could do that with the pen. And um, so I've always, writing and I have always had a love-hate. You know, I'm a writer, no, I'm not a writer. I could be a writer, no, you're not. That little voice in your head just keeps picking at you, doesn't it? Yeah. I have the same thing. Uh, where does your, your story as a storyteller kind of begin then, do you think? I think it starts with um, me as a little girl and sitting people down and having them listen. And, and um, I, I like performing. I like performing and taking people away and entertaining. Um, but that's also where my personal story started. Um, I've had a lot of material, let's call it material in my life. Um, I started life with nothing. Um, I, childhood poverty was my reality lived in houses that should have been condemned, uh, like the Coke bottles at the side of the road with my mom to get dinner. And um, so I've had a rich life as far as material. And I would say that's where my story really starts. And so I read one of your stories that talks about poverty. And, uh, and it starts off with you giving, you receiving food from a homeless man, even though you had already kind of given it to him in a way. And, and part of what I love about that is that connection of, well, when he asked you, why do you do this? He said, I've been there. Um, is that something that you use as your experience as a writer? Does that help fuel kind of everything you write or just certain stories? Or how do you, I guess my question is, how do you use your experiences uh, in your writing? Um, my experience is I'm all about kindness and compassion. I'm all about love and lifting other people. And um, I think my experiences make it, easier for me to put myself in that position because I have, even though my reality today is 100% different than what my reality as a little girl was, um, it really just contributes to, people don't want to read that I was at Starbucks this morning and, and had a green tea. They want to read, you know, that my six-year-old self lived in a house with no bathroom and no heat and, and um, you know, they, they want to read about those things. And um, the story with the guy on the park bench, that I love that story because uh, that to me was just the essence of giving and compassion. Um, I, at the time I had organized a volunteer um, project. We were passing out food to the needy, peanut butter, jelly, and bread. It was Operation Peanut Butter Jelly. And, and every couple months we would do uh, an event and this particular event we were downtown Bronson Park downtown Kalamazoo and I was going around the park making sure everybody had received and that needed to and I asked this man on the park bench you know did you get your peanut butter he had already made a sandwich I didn't notice did you get your peanut butter and and here's a guy who has nothing he's living outside and he he said, yes, I did. Could I make you a sandwich? Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. So, so giving and that compassion, that's what really moves me forward because it's not what we have. It's not what we um, can do. It's what is in our hearts that we have to offer. Yeah. Is, is that connection one of the things that you love about storytelling? Oh, like yeah. Connecting with your reader? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I like I've always been drawn to writers who are real, write about themselves and the per, you know, like I said, um, nobody wants to read the happy stuff that anybody could do. You know, people want to read, who are you really? People want to know that. We're all a little bit of a voyeur um, if we get real about it. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what we want to hear. And what is it about storytelling in general or writing in particular that moves you personally? What do you get out of it as a storyteller? As a storyteller, what moves me? Um, I have always been all about 
living your fullest life and helping others around you. I, I am only where I am because of the drive and motivation inside of me in combination with um, people who stepped in when stepping in was needed. So, you know, as a storyteller, I like to challenge the way people think. I like to challenge your beliefs. I, I like to um, give them a perspective of somebody who has lived a certain reality and now lives a completely different reality. Um, do, you, do you see a difference as a, as a storyteller between writing for a book, like one of your books, and writing um, an article on your Pixie Dust uh, personal blog or writing for Veg Out? Is it all a little bit different? Uh, it's not different as far as the book versus the blog, but it's different depending on the audience. You know, writing for my um, I'm blogger at Life, Love, and Pixie Dust, that's different. Those are personal essays. That's my story. Writing on Veg Out, um, that's an online vegan city guide. So the readers there want bullet points and tips. They want nine places to go. They want 10 reasons why. Um, but still within that, I think as a writer, you know, you always have this, what's my underlying theme? What's my motive? Like you said, what's my motive for doing this? And my motive is to lead people to lead a kinder, gentler, more compassionate life and to be everything they were put here to be and throw themselves out of the world in a positive way. And um, I, like with Veg Out, people might say, well, how do you do that when you're writing about vegan pizza? Mm -hmm. um, it is vegan pizza it's kind of it's a it's a more compassionate choice you're not killing animals to get there so for me it's still maintaining that theme of compassion and kindness and we're all here on the earth together that's that's a great that's a great way to say it tammy i like that um what would you say is a, one of your biggest challenges when it comes to storytelling oh biggest challenges um i I, like I said, I like to be real in my writing. I like to be raw. I like to put myself out there. Um, but it never, for me, is a, a self-centered, selfish um, approach. So the challenge is, how do I get real? How do I write this personal essay that's just about me and about my experience, about my, my reality, and yet have the reader think I'm talking to them, I'm writing about them. So you're writing about your personal experience, your one experience, but you're trying to appeal, and not just appeal, but you're trying to make this their experience. That's good stuff. Um, I, I like that you start talking a little bit about how, how you write and, and a little bit of how other writers are. So I, I was reading your article, uh, why, uh, why Buy the Cow, right, on your, on your uh, life love and pixie dust blog right. i love how you get into that you mentioned other writers either you know younger writers or writers asking for advice is is giving advice i mean now that you've been writing for a while and now that you're a professional writer is giving advice kind of that payoff that i've learned this now i can help others uh i'm not sure it's ever <laughs> easy to help others right. you know this is what's worked for me this is what's but, you know, I've read writing advice from all the authors that I love. And um, I, the, the one piece of writing advice that I read a couple decades ago that has just stuck with me, just keep writing. Like I said, writing and I had the love-hate. I'd, I'd put something out, get a couple rejections. Why am, I, why am I thinking I'm a writer? Why am I putting this out there? Um, and this guy in the article says, just keep writing. Don't stop. And, and whether it's journals, whether it's blogging, whether it's um, even social media posts, you know, it's all writing. Yeah, absolutely. It is, isn't it? It's, a, it's that content creation. You're telling some kind of a story in that way. How, which, which leads me to this, this question for you. How do different media platforms affect your storytelling as a writer? I think media platforms in general um, just help you get your writing in front of people. Uh, that used to be a real challenge before, you know, social media was the craze. And um, it used to be a challenge, you know, if you couldn't get a traditional publisher and get your work out there, you weren't seen if you didn't get accepted. Now, you know, 
you can get your work on a blog. You can get your work. You can write for an uh, online magazine. You could, you know, there are a lot of different. So it's just visibility, visibility. And even like with social media, I, I mentioned social media posts, creating those like little writing assignments and um, really looking at what you're writing and treating it as a writing assignment and not just throwing anything up on the wall. Yeah. Um, do you get your inspiration from anything in particular? Do you have a, a muse that you're, you know, a, a walk on the beach now in LA, uh, or, uh, you know, I love candles, whatever it is. Do you find inspiration from a specific place? Uh, I sit in the coffee shop with my <laughs> grande green tea and, uh, and that's how I write. I'm on the computer out now I'm in orange County. So I'm outside in the sunshine and mm. that's my favorite way to write. Um, but I would say, you know, as far as inspiration, really my inspiration comes from, um, you know, I love Anne Lamott. I love her writing. She's real. She talks about herself. She goes places other writers won't go. And um, I, I always think, you know, how real she writes. That's how I want to write. And then I go back to um, a book I have, Little Engine That Could, <laughs> you know, and I, I've kept it. I still have it. And I remember when I first heard that, I'm, you know, it just clicked with me. Whoa, she, she shouldn't be able to do that. But like, you know, she shouldn't be able to carry all those cars across the mountain to those little boys and girls. But that's not about her. That's about those little boys and girls and the toy and the, the toys and the food that they need. And um, she did it because she put it in her head and she told herself she could do it. And she thought she could. She thought she could. She thought she could. She thought she could. I love that, Tim. That's great. Uh, would that be your favorite story, though, you think? Uh, that's my favorite. That's my favorite story that is an inspiration. I have a lot yeah. of favorite stories. <laughs> Can't pick just one, right? No. If you could, but if you could kind of whittle it down to a, a, a best kind of story, what one word would you use to describe the best kind of story that can be told? Memoir. Memoir. I, I love people's stories. I love to hear who you are, how you got to where you are, what, what brought you, because we, we, tend to, we tend to judge people. We see what we see in front of us, but there are so many stories that went into that person that you see in front of you. That's a, that's a great point. So many stories go into the one story, don't they? Yeah. That's good stuff. Um, why, why do you think we as humans love stories so much? Um, you know, I just think they help us to understand our lives. We're all trying to make sense of our lives. We're all trying to make sense of why are we here? How do we get to where we want to be? You know, why did this person do this? And I, I think, you know, it's just like we, why we love food. You know, we're just, we're feeling emotional. We're feeling um, like we need to fuel our bodies. We're, it's the same thing with stories. You know, we're looking to just escape our lives for a couple hours. We're looking to uh, be informed or educated. You know, we're looking to laugh, to cry. We're looking to, you know, if you read a book and you're crying in a book, you might never cry in real life. And that's kind of an emotional release for you. So um, in real life, you know, in your um, conversations, but really uh, it just depends on what we're looking for. Um, I've had friends say, oh, I don't read those kind of books because, you know, that's just trash. I, you know, if it helps somebody escape their lives for a minute and just have that release and have that stress management, you know, it's education, it's hope and, and inspiration, all of it. Yeah, so if you were to look back um, at how it's gone for you so far and, and another writer come up to you and said, give me one piece of advice. What do you think would be the one thing you would tell a new writer who's looking to not only do it, just to write, but maybe write professionally? What would be one thing you would say they have to do? To, to have to do, like I said, just keep writing. Like um, be professional, you use the word professional. Um, you know, be professional. You're, you're not uh, text talking with publishers or agents. Uh, use, you know, professional um, conversation skills. Mm -hmm. With all the noise out there in the world today, uh, you know, social media, different platforms, everybody wants to get their message out or whatever it is, right? How are writers supposed to get their message out today to their audience, do you think? 
how are writers supposed to get their message out to their audience? Yeah. Um, it, and, and I've had friends ask me this who have a message that they haven't put out yet and they want to. I think that depends on who you are. You know, if you're the blogging store, it's all your personality and what you want to put into it. And um, if you're the blogging store, you know, a blogger is my vintage blog. Uh, it's been there forever. It's like the the friend that won't go away. I keep trying to, <laughs> it, but, but it just stays there. Yeah. Um, I, it just depends on who you are. You know, get professional. Read. I would read everything on being a writer. I would, I would read everything on how to write for blogs or whatever your interest is. Um, but, but mostly I would say, you know, treat everything you write as a practice, as an exercise and, and don't give up. Don't quit. Think I can. I think I can. Right. Don't give up. I yeah. Love because as soon as you quit, maybe your um, published piece was on the other side of that. And, and that's, that's a, another point is, you know, when I started, my goal was just to get published in, in any way. So I would do a lot of articles that were uh, not for pay because then I would uh, accumulate some published clips and then, you know, I would um, get these pieces that paid just a little and then I would get, you know, more and more. So baby steps forward, don't give up. How do you think in the world today, as we're talking about getting the word out and stuff like this, you know, you mentioned uh, social media a little while ago. How do you think, Tammy, social media has affected the craft of storytelling in general right now and today? How has social media affected the craft of storytelling? Um, like I said, visibility. Uh, I think we've gotten a little looser with stories um, on social media. You know, everybody becomes a storyteller. <laughs> um, but, you know, everybody is a storyteller anyway. What you wear, what you say, what you do. Uh, your actions, your um, everything you do, give somebody your story. So whether you put it to print or not, whether you tell it or not, you are a story a storyteller. Just with what you choose to do, to wear, to eat, to you know, people to talk to. Um, but social media really just gives visibility. That's that's the big. Uh, just gives visibility. It helps you put your word out there, your story out there. Do you think there's any kind of negative uh, effect that that's had? You know, you hear <clears throat> some people complain about the, the next generation. These kids text all the time. They do this. They, you know, 140 characters is not enough time to tell a story. So everybody's lazy now. They don't read. They don't write. Do you think that there's any validity to that at all as a storyteller? Uh, as a storyteller, I could um, write Anna, Anna Karenina or I could write The Little Engine That Could. <laughs> Dr. Seuss was a storyteller. He didn't have a lot of words to work with. You know, um, I think if you're doing a blog for veg out, a, a blog article for veg out media, um, or if you are writing, uh, you know, a certain amount of characters, uh, I think it's all storytelling. It's just how you approach it. And, and as far as not wanting to read, you know, that's the book I'm working on right now on uh, a book of vegan answers. You know, when somebody first finds out you're vegan, they have a million questions. And those questions are always the same. Where do you get your protein? You know, what do you eat? What about fish? Why isn't honey? And so uh, the idea I had was just to put all of those answers into a book and not for vegans, not for people who want to go vegan, but um, for people who have questions. And it's very social media-like, have a lot of uh, hashtags. It's just very quick little blurbs on different questions. And there's no reason why that's not right. That absolutely is right. Oh, yeah, sure. Is it kind of like the, the omnivore's guide to vegan living? That's it, right? That's, yeah, yeah you, you got to get a ton of questions about that, I'm sure, don't you? Oh, yeah, and they're always the same. No. <clears throat> and are any of them just kind of like, Face palm, come on, really? <laughs> you know, just on that topic, real quick, we have, um, we just have a lack of information and we have misinformation. And um, if somebody has a question, I take time to answer the question. But I thought, you know, why am I doing this over and over? I'll just put the answers in one place and then there are the answers. 
That's great stuff. So, uh, so going back to stories and writing in books, um, I'd love to hear the story behind uh, Freeing My Inner Blonde. Oh, Freeing My Inner Blonde. Yeah. That's just a collection of essays um, on I was blonde until I was five years old. So it's like Freeing My Inner Child. It's kind of a play on Freeing My Inner Child. I was blonde until I was five years old. So my five-year-old self was pretty sassy <laughs> and knew what she wanted. And she didn't take anything from anybody. And, um, and, and that's kind of, you know, the point that we get to in our lives is we let other people tell us who we are. Um, we let other people tell us what we should wear, what we should do, what we should career we should have, how we should think. Um, and, um, you know, the essays are just a collection from my blog. I pulled them from my blog and, and uh, on getting back to my roots. Do you think that's a way that, that young writers uh, in a business can kind of start putting a book together? Is like, I, I like how you say just keep writing, just write. Mm -hmm. Creating a blog of things like that, can that turn into a book? Uh, it can turn into a book or it can, I've had publishers um, turn that away in the mm -hmm. past. You know, oh, this is great, this looks great, but we don't, publish anything that's already been online. Um, and then I've seen books that have been a collection of essays from a blog. So it just depends on the situation. Um, but that's a good first start. You know, uh, I, I'm on Blogger and that's a free uh, platform. And so that is a great way to get started because there's no money put out and just putting your thoughts together, putting your words together. Um, like I said earlier, be professional about it if you think this is something you want to do and really think about what you're writing. Really treat it as a conversation. And you know, for, so for season one of the Storytellers Network, we're talking, we've been talking to writers, but I, li I like to hear how even as a writer, you do other things as a storyteller. Because at the heart of it, we're talking about storytellers. Um, do you see a correlation between being a writer and being a professor? When it comes to storytelling, did you tell stories to your students? <laughs> Maybe you should ask my students. <laughs> we so many tangents, I'd forget what we're talking about. Um, I think, like I said, I go back to everything we do is a story. It's like if you, if you sell, you can sell anything. If you teach, you can teach anything. Um, if you're a storyteller, everything is a story. So for me, it wasn't about Skinner and Freud and, um, you know, any of the psychology. Uh, I did that because I was paid to do that. But for me, it was about um, lifting others, helping others to feel like, um, to, to find out who they are and what they're here for and to, and to figure out everything that's inside of them and throw that out at the world and why they should do that to positively impact as many lives as they could. You know, for me, that's the story right there. That's why we're here. So how can I do that while we're talking about behavioral conditioning? Mm -hmm. That was, that was a challenge, but yes, there were stories that went in. <laughs> So like, personal stories thrown in as examples it's psychology right right well we, we, we make that personal connection when you have when the storyteller is telling something personally you know we, we connect with it as humans right uh at what at what point you, know, you, you mentioned earlier that you've been a writer for a long time but you're a professional writer kind of not as long obviously is there a point where you've kind of realized like you've you've made it or or have, have you are you still working on that I'm still working on that. Yeah. I haven't got to that. You know, writing's always been this thing I've done on the side. Um, I've been in different veg magazines. I've been um, in veg news, uh, online magazines. Uh, and, and like you said, I've got the two books up on Amazon and blog. And veg out. But you know, it's always been this thing I've done on the side. I was a professor. That was my thing. That's what I did. You know, um, I was a mom and a volunteer. That's what I did. And writing was this thing I did over on the, on the side over here. Um, now, you know, when I said earlier that I had uh, decided a few months ago to pack up the car and move out here um, to follow the dream, this is part of the dream. Writing is coming out of the closet. And um, 
it's front and center. And that's, that's my hope is to, you know, get a book published and to really have my writing more visible than what it is and, and figure out what it feels like when I've made it. Yeah. Well, that, so that kind of leads me to that question. If, if you were to visualize making it, what do you think that looks like? I don't think I'll ever feel like I'm there, honestly, because of who I am. Because I think as soon as you feel like you've made it, you stop. And I, I just don't have it in me to stop. You know, um, it's, it's, yes, going up the mountain uh, with the little train, you know, going up the mountain, it's, it's harder on the one side than it is on the other. But I don't think you ever get to the top and you say, this is it. This is, this is I'm a writer and I'm, you know, I've made it. And okay, now I can sit down. No, you don't do that. You just, you know, because you have to live until you die. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you could only tell though, one last story, this is, this is the big one. This is our, our Barbara Walters moment. Um, if you could tell just one last story, what would it, what would that look like for you? Hmm. Well, you took away my answer earlier. I was going to tell the story of the guy in the park bench. Oh, man. Maybe I'll come up with another story. So um, it, it would be foot in the door. Foot in the door would be my story. That's pretty much how I've lived my life. And I think a lot of times, um, a lot of times we don't do things because they can't look exactly like we want them to look. So I went to college, you know, I grew up with nothing. um, Didn't have food a lot of times, lived in um, poor conditions. But um, I always knew I wanted to go to college because I knew I wanted to break that cycle and I wanted something different for my life. And so I I did, I I didn't know how it happened. I didn't know where the money came from, but I, I did go off to college. And as an adult, you know, after the first year, of college, I had to work and pay for everything myself. And, and, but as an adult, I found out that there was a community member that had paid for my entire first year of college. He didn't know me, knew my dad. I, I never knew this until I was an adult. And so my story would be, it didn't look exactly like I thought it would look going to college. He gave me that foot in the door. We have no idea the impact we can have on the life of another human being with just a small action. Um, Think if I didn't have that foot in the door, I would not have gone to college, you know, when I did or whatever. Think of all the students who passed through my classroom. Think of all the people that were impacted by, you know, what I had to offer at the time. Um, That would not have looked like it did if that one man hadn't stepped in when he did and given me that foot in the door. We can help other people on their journeys and help them with their stories. Foot in the door. I like that. That's pretty, pretty powerful, Tammy. I like that. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Thanks for taking time to, to, to do this today for the Storytellers Network listeners. I love hearing writers and storytellers from all walks of life. Um, so I appreciate you making time for us today. All right. Thank you for having me. You bet. So thank you to our guest, Tammy Ortley. Be sure to visit her online where you can find everything to do about her and Veg Out Los Angeles, that kind of stuff, uh, including her blog as well. You can find the links done in our show notes. Uh, If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it all over the place. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, email, text it. Anywhere that you can share with other storytellers is always helpful. And speaking of helpful, please consider leaving us a review if you like what we're doing here. It helps us reach new storytellers. And a big thank you to our partners here at the Storytellers Network, Casterly and Podcast Pilot. Thanks for making the world of podcasts a better place. Jamie J and Sarah Parrish and the rest of the team over there, great folks, and you'll be better off knowing them. Until next time, here's to telling our stories and having stories to tell. Cheers. <laughs>